Hi. Here are some interesting figures, and I've put a link in the description of this video so you can check if you like. As of the 16th of June, um, two million six hundred and eighty seven thousand eight hundred and fifty one refugees crossed the borders of surrounding countries in the Ukraine seeking safety and help. So that's Poland, Belarus, Hungary, Slovakia, Moldova, Romania. But guess where most of them went? Russia. Nearly half. One million 230,800 people crossed into Russia, where we are told all is tyranny and suppression. Big bad Putin can't be trusted for anything. Well, clearly over a million and a quarter Ukrainians disagree. Now, of course, I presume a significant number are from the Damask region, but they are still choosing Russia, despite the overwhelming propaganda bombarding us daily. And that number going into, in, in, into Russia, 1,230,800, is 50% of the total number of refugees going to 36 other European countries. I've already made a couple of little videos about the Ukraine, how the reporting on it from the Western media is so biased, it's almost funny, which of course it isn't. Most people aren't interested in basic facts, such as the Ukrainian punitive treatment of its Russian speaking minority for years of the murder of 13,000 people in the Damascus region from 2014 to about 2020. Of the fact that the Ukraine had the sixth most thriving economy when part of the USSR and as soon as it left Russia, it plummeted to bottom. And a million Ukrainians walked out of the country into Russia again and Poland to avoid starvation. Since then, the country has subsisted often on US handouts, most of which found its way into the accounts of corrupt officials. The deal is that the US, with NATO as its foreign legion, can build military bases in the Ukraine and on the border, mostly to target Russia and China. I actually spoke to someone in Kiev when the Russians, we were told, were already there and murdering civilians. And in fact, the Russians were 40 miles away at the border and it was Ukrainian gangsters murdering each other and civilians to steal their stuff. But hey, who cares about that when we have a much simpler, big bad Putin, horrible Russians, poor Ukrainians model to swallow. Also, if you think you can have a war without atrocities on both sides, then you need to read more, his more history. If you don't want atrocities, don't have war. And the run on effect, of the propaganda surrounding this has been a liberal hand-wringing to welcome Ukrainian war refugees. You can't move in this country for campaigns and appeals to help Ukrainians. We do have a duty of care to genuine refugees, but the same virtue signaling embrace of war refugees wasn't extended to Iraqis or Libyans, Afghans, Syrians. I wonder why. No political capital there perhaps. So the propaganda machine wasn't working in that direction. Of course, there are Ukrainians who are suffering. What is galling is the exploitation of charitable impulses for political gain. Just compare this. In my local village newsletter was the following, and I quote, we have become home again to refugees. Our first Ukrainian family arrived in June, mum, dad, and five children in less than a week they had signed on at the doctors, opened a bank account, discovered both Tesco and Lidl, and that there are English classes for Ukrainians run at the library, met other Ukrainians in the area, and the middle two had started at St Mary's Primary School in Southern! Exclamation mark. This was thanks to a whirlwind of support from the sponsor, a team of villagers and other people for which they are very grateful. And then there's a, the usual requests for donations to the Church's Ukrainian Refugee Support Fund and an offer uh, and a request to, for practical help. And then a few days later, um, somebody wrote in, in the new newsletter, it's probably a long shot, but is anyone traveling regularly to, Day to Dayton Fields Industrial Estate able to give a, a lift to the father of the Ukrainian refugee family living in the village? Um, 
alternatively if alternatively are you able to help with driving him to and from work as part of a rota of volunteers and longer term he will obtain he's hoping to obtain a car so this is just an interim measure what you don't see in this newsletter this rather self-congratulatory newsletter or indeed anywhere in the press is the following in my local area so where this family has been welcomed housed fed clothed given money housing schooling language classes the following is also true 3539 uk families and individuals have either lost their homes or been threatened with homelessness during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's just between April and December 2020, so two years ago. The figures will be way up on that now. Probably 5,000 is a very conservative estimate. So yippee hurrah, we have at great expense and effort to the taxpayer, given a Ukrainian family a great life and simultaneously created misery and despair for at least probably 5,000 British families and individuals. There have been uh, 150,000 applications from Ukrainians to reside in the UK. And at the same time, government figures released by the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities shows that there are 50% more people sleeping rough on the streets of my local area compared to the previous year. And the chief executive of a homeless charity um, for, for the area said these figures are worrying and show this is a problem that shouldn't be ignored it's all around us and much of it isn't visible we believe these figures he says are just the tip of the iceberg so many people are camping sofa surfing and doing whatever they can to stay warm and dry over the winter months and also the temporary accommodation uh, for, 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 for thousands of rough sleepers during winter, the scheme for that has now formally ended. The number of people who have died while homeless has increased by 52% across England and Wales. This is over a thousand per year. A thousand per year. On the day that I read the, the appeal for the Ukrainian family, I passed three homeless uh, people um, sleeping in shop doorways and I talked to one of them who, surprise, surprise, was uh, an ex-army, um, suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, came home, couldn't cope, lost, it, lost his, um, his family and lost his home, has no hope at all. And, no, and he said, I, no one will help me. So it seems to me that if charity doesn't begin at home, then it's highly suspect. It's like the man who publicly makes huge donations and does good works, but at home kicks his dog and lets his family go cold and starve.